Chris, how y'all doing out there? It is time for the verse of the day. Are y'all ready? <laughs> I know I am because I need the word every day. Because if I do not keep myself before the Lord, my life will immediately, immediately go into shambles down the wrong path and I want to make sure I'm doing everything to do my part to help somebody stay on that straight and narrow path. It's easier if we work as one body like we're supposed to instead of separate trying to do things on our own. So Let's see if we can work that out today. The verse is coming out of 1 Timothy chapter 1. And the verse is verse 15. So 1 Timothy chapter 1 verse 15. And I'm going to go ahead and read 16 as well because it ties in so well with the verse of the day. So I'm going to have to bless you with two today. And I'm reading it out of the New Living Translation from the Version Bible app. And it reads, verse 15 reads, This is the trustworthy saying. This is a trustworthy saying. And everyone should accept it. Christ Jesus came into the world to save sinners, and I am the worst of them all. Wow. Okay, let me give you a little backstory on this book. This is Paul, one of the greatest apostles um, that they say really they have walked this earth he did so much for spreading the gospel the good news of Christ and he is mentoring a young man named Timothy so first and second Timothy is about that he's talking to Timothy teaching Timothy the things that he has learned as a mentoree because he's mentoring him trying to teach him and guide him on the way that he should go and how the grace and mercy of God is the only thing the only thing that put him in that position as an apostle as somebody who has the authority to walk in the love, the faith, and the power of God to spread the good news, which is to spread the news about Christ, his coming, his living, his death, his resurrection. For who? Us, the sinners, the ones that needed to be saved from our sins, from our wrongs, from our issues, from our illnesses, from a messed up mind, from a messed up heart, from a messed up life. Christ died for all of that. And I love this scripture because he made this thing personal. He said, yes, I know why Christ has come. It's to save the sinners. And I am the biggest sinner. I am the worst one. Now, was he really the worst one? No, because it has some people that done a lot of things worse than him. But it's humbling to see that somebody that has a title that high and that is so loved and adhered and honored and respected knows that if it was not for the love and the grace and the mercy of God, he would have still been doing what he was doing. And that was killing the Christians. The very same people that in his day he 
was called to save by and through the word of God, by the good news. So yes, he was a persecutor of the brethren, but that's because he even said in the verse before that, it was out of ignorance and unbelief. He didn't believe in God. So of course he can persecute somebody if 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 you don't understand or know God and you see these people and they're walking and talking in the power of God and that's something you're not used to, of course you're going to judge that. You're going to judge it because it seems alien to you. It seems foreign. It, it, it's not computing <laughs> in your mind that that is truth, that that is life, that that is where you need to be. That's the spot to be, honey. He wasn't getting that because he said, I, I did it in... He said, let, let me go back. Um, verse 13, he said, even though I used to blaspheme the name of Christ in my, um, in my insolence, I persecuted his people, but God had mercy on me because I did it in ignorance and unbelief. Oh, how gracious. Oh, how generous and gracious our Lord was. He filled me with the faith and love that comes from Christ Jesus. So this is Paul telling Timothy, his mentor, that I was full of unbelief. I was full of ignorance. This is why I did the things I did to people who I love and protect and go after now with the love of Christ and the good news. So back to 15, which is our main verse. He's saying that I am the worst of them because he make this thing personal it's a time and a purpose there's a time and a place for everything but it's definitely a time in your life when you need to realize okay look yes i might be seen by a lot of people yes i might have a title or whatever but i have some issues i have some things that i need to work out in my life I do some things and say some things that are not becoming of me or of how I was raised or how I was taught I've let my morals just go to the wayside and I've been living it up doing any and everything I want to do and just expect people to respect me and to be cool with my mess and my drama and you have to be willing sometimes to check your own self because only you can bring yourself out of denial of your mess so he said i was one of the worst ones so i know that jesus christ is real because i know for a fact that i needed a savior i needed to be saved from myself and my own mess in my own drama it's cool it's okay for you to know that you have things that need to be worked on can't nobody work on you like you somebody else can see your faults or your defects of character but only you can change them yes they can give you a motivational um a word of motivation or encouragement but if you don't take that word and work that thing out for your own self, you got to walk it out. And this is what Paul is telling Timothy that it wasn't nothing but the faith and love that came from Christ that got him to being a persecutor of God's people and 
yeah, a persecutor of God's people to running after them with the love of Christ to spread the good news, to let them know that they can be saved through Jesus Christ. And that's, that's uh, amazing to me. That's a world of difference. That's a world of difference. Think about it in today's time. That's almost like, remember ISIS? They still over there killing Christians. And that's just like one of them killing Christians, persecuting Christians. And all of a sudden, he have a one-on-one -on -one experience with God. And God speaks to him and his heart changes. And now, he's saving Christians from the hands of ISIS. And instead of killing them, he's setting them free. He's rescuing them from those that are still persecuting the children of God. Because God lives in his children. We are not by ourselves. He promised that he will never leave us or forsake us. He is always there. He dwells within us. By the dwelling of the Holy Spirit. The Holy Spirit is a part of Christ. God is a, a triune being. He's three pieces. I don't know if I said that word right. Hopefully I did. But it means three. It's God the Father, God the Son, God the Holy Spirit. God and His Son is in heaven. The Holy Spirit is in this world. In believers. Working at all times. To get us to that place of perfection and he will be perfecting us until the return of Christ but Paul is letting Timothy know don't just look at me as a mighty man of God as an apostle uh, someone who can't be touched or can't be spoken to don't put me on the level way up here when I'm down here God is up there not me, but God is and his son for coming and living and sacrificing his life and his self for those he knew that was not going to be able to make it without him. Glory to God. Thank you, Jesus. Lord, I praise you right now for it because I know I needed to be saved. I knew I was a sinner. I had things done to me that had me in sin and I did things to myself that got me even more deeper in sin because I loved darkness. I loved doing the things that felt good to the flesh. If it looked good, if it felt good, if it if I thought it was good, I wanted to do it, be around it, be it, taste it, feel it, whatever. I lived in my flesh. It was all about pleasing my senses my five senses and some of y'all can relate to that so just like Paul can say he was the worst one I can say I was the worst one too and I needed the faith of Christ and I needed his love as well moving on to verse 16 it says but God had mercy on me so that Christ Jesus could use me as a prime example y'all hear that a prime example of his great patience come on y'all I need y'all to understand that God is faithful and he had patience with us. When we are in our mess and we can't seem to find a way of escape. Or we just love the mess that we in. Sin feel good. I do not. I do not want to make living a set apart life out of this world just seem like it's easy it's not it's hard because my soul my spirit is still in a fleshly body this is the temple of god our bodies this flesh is just a temple this just like the church is a building 
to your soul and your spirit, your body is a flesh suit. It's the temple of the Holy Spirit. He dwells within you. Your soul dwells within his body. But when you are not a child of God and you're living your life on your own, doing the best you can do, living your best life you feel as though you can live, Sin feels good in the moment. Drinking, smoking, popping pills, being prideful, being money hungry, doing the things that satisfy your flesh feels good in the moment. Overeating feels good in the moment. Talking about somebody, getting all up in somebody's business feels good in the moment. You talking about somebody to make somebody feel lower so you can feel higher feels good in the moment. But the wages of sin is death. The price you will have to pay for doing those things in the long run over a period of time is death. Somebody has to pay the cost. And Christ has paid that. That's why salvation is so important. And God is patient with us. He gives us time to realize and recognize that we need a Savior. We need somebody to pay that cost unless you want to pay it yourself. And that's death. Spiritually, physically, mentally, death, being set apart, being separated from the all-knowing, loving, powerful God. I know you don't want that. That's a horrible life to live, to be in desperation and hopeless all of your life because you refuse to recognize someone loves you and cares for you and is patient and is kind and is there to pour his love in and throughout your whole being and your whole life. God is patient. So God will never turn his back on you. Ever. Ever. I don't care what nobody have told you. Your family. Your friends. The devil. People. Evil people. Your best friend. I don't care what you have done. How. How bad it could have been. I don't care what you have done. God loves you and he will never, ever, ever turn his back on you. He will never give up. He's the most faithful. There's nobody more faithful. That means he will not reject you if you call out to him. I promise he didn't turn his back on me. When I chose to do what he said not to do, when I broke his commandments, he did not turn his back on me. He did not leave me in the dark by myself, alone, abandoned. He didn't. He was there. But he had to give me the eyes to see him so I could acknowledge him. And he did that by pouring his love on me. For, to send people across my path in my life that was willing to love on me. To give me guidance. To help me out of the dark places in my life that I was in when I was hopeless. He sent somebody to show me his hope. So I could see him. Open your eyes. If you are in a place of despair, know that he is coming for you. And when he comes for you, he's coming with faithfulness, with joy, with love, with peace. And he's not coming to punish you. He's coming to wrap you in his loving arms and to place your feet on a solid, sturdy foundation, which is him. And to set your soul on fire like never before so you can accomplish and be all you have ever dreamed and imagined that you could be. That's God. I don't know what nobody else have told you, but that is God. He is love. What others call love in this world, that ain't love. People say they love a hot dog. How you gonna love a hot dog? You eat it, it digests, and you boo-boo it out. How you gonna love that? 
It tastes good to you. Your senses, it tastes good. People will have sex with somebody because they look good. The lust of the eye, it looks good to your sight. A sense. I love the way he makes me feel. Your senses, touch. He make you feel. Ooh, she say the most nastiest things to me. It turns me on. Hearing your senses. We are in love with the senses, the things of the flesh. But you have to come above that, my love. You have to rise up and realize your spirit man is dying the more you gratify your flesh. Whatever you feed, that is what grows. So if you feed the things of the flesh, which is your senses, which is lust, then that is what you become. But when you fill your spirit with the word of God, your spirit man can grow and you will become more stronger. So there's definitely patience with even the worst sinners. So even the worst people in the world, people that have raped somebody, yeah, what they did was awful. It was wrong, but can they still be forgiven by God? Yes, everybody make mistakes just because everybody don't see what you do behind closed doors don't make you no perfect than nobody else. The things I have done behind closed doors don't make me no perfect than nobody else. So we should look at our own sin, the own stuff we have done and stop pointing our fingers to others and say, at least I haven't done that, at least I haven't done that. But at the same time, you have done some things in your life so you can point all your fingers right back to yourself. Because we all have done something. We have all fallen short of the glory of God. And then it says, then others will realize that they too can believe in Him and receive eternal life. Eternal. That means forever life. So I, I talked about in my videos, is two lives. It's this one here on earth and the next one. And this is the one your soul, your spirit man will leave and go to. After this body is dead, you know, if you live one day, you must die. And when you die, this body is going to return back to dust. It's going to return back to dirt because that's what it is. Why do you think we need to take a bath to get the dirt, the dead skin off our body? Because we are dying every day. Every day you live is a closer day to death. I don't want to say that to get anybody scared, but it's true. No person on this earth lives forever. It's not going to happen. So you must prepare yourself for the next life. Where are you going? You going to heaven or hell? Where are you going? You must choose this day. Where are you going? You going to choose life or you going to choose death? I beg of you to choose life. So that means you have to realize that you need somebody to save you out of your mess. And God is there to save you by giving you a savior. Someone that was perfect. That died for all of our wrong. In the past, the present, and the future. So we may have what? Eternal life. You can't tell me that that's not love. Because that's true love. A man coming to tell me, Missy, baby, I love you, girl. Show me. <laughs> die for me. If you love me, be willing. Are you willing to die for me? All my wrongs, all my mistakes. Can you love me? And you know for a fact I don't love you. Can you bend over your backwards and give me your all. Knowing I will never do nothing for you. Can you? <laughs> Most men will take off running. Do you hear me? Be careful. Who you let in your personal space. Be careful who you let in your ear. Everybody that say they love you baby don't love you. Make them prove that thing. Make them walk that thing out. Have some pride about yourself. Some love for yourself. Some self-worth. Don't just give your love away to anybody. 
but give it to the one who truly deserved it and did pay the price, which is Christ. Thank you so much for joining me today. Hopefully I said something that pushed some kind of button within you to make you want to change, to be better. And I will see you next time. Thank you. Bye.